Welcome back to our Life Group Leaders Lounge uh, with our good friend, Matt DiMatteo. We're going to jump right back into our conversation on the topic of bold faith. I remember something that uh, Pastor Carter said yesterday in the sermon, do for one what you wish you could do for everyone. So just Amen. start, start Amen. with, with one. And like you said, you didn't envision necessarily feeding 2 million, uh, but you, you started. Yeah. Yep. And I love that That's quote, awesome. uh, the hope of Christ spreads at the speed of relationships. Yeah. That was just worth saying again. And like, I, I feel like that's a statement I want to chew on and like take with me. There's so much mm-hmm. there. Um, I'm also getting this visual here as you're talking that like, you know, um, as the church is obviously the body of Christ. And so we often say things like we are the hands and feet of Jesus. And that's absolutely true. God has chosen to use his people as his method to reach the world. That's just the way God has chosen to work and act in our world. And so it's almost like what you're saying is we have to find those areas where the heart of Jesus already is planted. Jesus's Mm -hmm. heart is there. And where do we need to bring the hands and feet of Jesus to? Where does the body need to catch up with the heart? Where does the body of Christ need to come where the heart of Jesus already is? That's just a visual that's helping me. Yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, Matt, I, one thing that we are really encouraging our life groups to do is to be the body, or uh, to be, the, like Braden is saying, the hands and feet of Christ in our neighborhoods and our communities. So we're challenging every one of our life groups to, f- to find some way to serve together in their small pocket of, of a group, me- group members. And I think one of, the, one of the challenges that we're running into is, you know, how do, how do I know what my group is supposed to do? You know, like mm. you were mentioning that, hey, you had a passion for something and then you saw this need and so you stepped into it and then God took that 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 step of faith and then he just multiplied the work through that. What would you say to our leaders that maybe are struggling to find, like, what is my thing that I can do? What is, what is maybe one thing my group can do? Good question. Yeah, I think it's, it's sitting down as a team and just saying, hey, what are, what are the assets we have? What are, we, what are the, the people we have in our group? And what do we have access to? So, hey, what are, what are the spaces we can serve? Are, are there things already happening in our neighborhood in and around San Diego that we can start with? I'll tell you this, from a nonprofit manager and director, there's groups across the city uh, in San Diego, in Chicago, that are always looking for help and volunteers. And mm-hmm. from, from soup kitchens to tutors to mentors to coaches, um, all across the board, there's spaces. And I think... Again, back to my point about the hope of Christ spreads through relationships. A lot of times we just need the space to be able to have those relationships. And, and we overthink, we overthink the, the outreach model. We think, man, we got we to gotta go reach those people in this part of San Diego so we can invite them to church and get them to church. And if they come to church, man, we succeeded. But if we learned anything in 2020, when the church building's door are forced closed because of COVID and everything else, That's where the people, the body of Christ, can shine the brightest. And people Mm. ask, well, when did you guys reopen? And and my response is always, we never closed. We never closed. We might have had service move online, but we were always the hands and feet of Jesus. And so I think, to your question, it's it's looking at what you have and just making a step. Again, back to not needing, man, well, we need a place where we can go long term and it has to check all these boxes. Just find a few places and maybe a strategy as a church find three or four partners that you can already work with and go deep with them. I would really encourage the church to find a few spaces across San Diego where you can say, man, we're going to go really deep. And there's plenty of groups out there um, doing great work. And what they need is people. And they don't have to be a Christian group. It can be a space where you can infiltrate, so to speak, with a bunch of believers who are going to love on people, walk with people, care for people. And guess what? Your faith, your walk with Christ is going to shine and just like St. Francis says, hey, when you're sharing the gospel, hey, when necessary, use words. And it's the idea that our actions are going to share the hope of Christ. They're going to see what mm-hmm. you're about, and they're going to praise their Father in heaven. And so um, do an assessment, kick it around, but end of year is a great time to jump in. Thanksgiving's coming, Christmas coming. There's a lot of quick and easy service opportunities. Yep. Um, but happy to talk more on that uh, in the future as well. But there's that's that's a quick answer. Yeah, I, I have one that's more awesome. question there uh, too. I mean, yeah. it, bringing this also back to like healthy leaders, like obviously one reason why Brooks has uh, spoken so highly of you is the boldness of your faith. And so is there anything you want to encourage leaders with like how, how to cultivate boldness? Uh, you know, is, is there a way to cultivate it as opposed to, I feel like it's something that we sometimes assume is a character trait someone has or doesn't have. So what's ways to cultivate boldness of faith in your opinion? 
Yeah, no, that's a great question. Bol boldness of faith is is just like everything else. It's something you got to practice and you got to do. Oh, that's good. And for somebody just starting out, boldness is, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna literally just go meet my neighbor. I've never met him. A lot of times, hey, we we see him, we wave, but I don't really know them. So a first step right out the gate is I'm just gonna get to know him, and not for some sake of all oh, right out the gate. I got to preach the gospel and do this. I got. Hey, I'm just going to know them and build a relationship there. For somebody else, you might already have deep relationships and a bold faith, a bold step for you uh, is some, some healing you got to do. Some healing you got to do internally mm -hmm. within your own self, within your family. I think a great bold step is, is, is again, about being in re right, right relationship with people is a lot of times uh, bold steps are the very things we don't want to do are probably the bold steps we need to take. Uh, and so it's that. thinking, yeah. man, good. what are the things I'm avoiding? What so are the things good. I'm not trying to do? And just start with those things, those relationships. And when you go and face what seems like this crazy mountain and you decide, you know what, I'm just going to do it. Guess what? You get over that mountain and you realize there's like 10 mountains ahead that are yeah. even bigger than the one you had. <laughs> but the problem is you, expect, you, only, you only see the first mountain and you think like, oh, I could never do that. I could never do that. And if you ask me right now, I'm leading an org with almost 80 staff. We're reaching a ton of people. And if you would have told me when I knew Brooks first at the beginning that I would have been leading in 2021 <laughs> and we'd have X amount of millions of dollars and 80, 80 staff, I would have sat there and told you it would be easy. Like it would be, oh, I would have out a ride. I can just fold my hands, sit back. And, and it's still crazy hard at this level. It's just different leadership challenges. And so my point is you take that first bold step. God will prepare you. You'll feel scared. You'll feel like Moses and, and look at Moses as an example. Each step of the way he said, no, I can't go speak. Oh, no, I can't do this. No, I can't go take this. He had complainers all around him. He had challenging spaces and things. Um, but it's taking the first bold step, whether how big or small you think it is, and God will give you everything you need. Dude, I love that, Matt. Yeah. I love that. I mean, I could I could say from just knowing you, like, I mean, you're living this. You're not just talking about this. And I think something you said is really cool because – if we would if, if we would see the mountain range behind us, you know, if, if you if you were able to see all that was there, it'd almost be overwhelming to where you wouldn't even want to yes. take that first mountain, you know. Yep. But the Lord in His yep. wisdom shows us something ahead of us, and then with like you said, the courage, bold faith, uh, He gets you over that, and then the next mountain that comes, it's not like it's any easier, but you just know that you've you've you know you've got you the Lord with successful. you. Already successful. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and I think to that, one one thing that made me think of, I want to look back at the end of my life. I don't know how long I got. None of us do. Hey, I want to look back at the end of my life and see how far God has carried me and how many mountains we've walked over and taken through. And guess what? You hit a mountain, just past the mountain is a huge valley. And that's just the nature of life. You're going to have these peaks, these things you overcome, mm -hmm. and then you're going to have these these deep, dark moments. I'm I'm facing one, Brooks knows, as as my dad has been battling cancer and he's likely in his last months of life. And so I'm thinking mm -hmm. a lot about legacy. I'm thinking a lot about my relationship with my dad. I'm thinking about my relationship with my own kids and how I can pour into them. But I think it's knowing that God is going to be with you through the highest peaks. Mm -hmm. As you take those first steps, he's going to be with you when you go through the next Valley. And as you go through each phase, as he walks with you, he's then now equipped you to be able to bring somebody else through that same, uh, that same mountain, that mm -hmm. same valley. And I think that's the nature of the body of Christ is we're in it together. Like we, it's, it's stronger together. I don't know if I'm on camera, but I have my stronger together shirt on. And we, <laughs> we viewed that as a, as a theme for the year. Like, man, we're facing this crazy difficult season for all of us, but we're stronger together. Yeah. Uh, and now we're moving into a theme of healing together. How do we heal together? And, and that's the mm -hmm. beauty of the body of Christ is we're meant to do it together. So I don't know the rest of you on this call. I know Brooks well, but I'm, man, we're right there in it because we're brothers and sisters in Christ there mm -hmm. in San Diego, here in Chicago. And the beauty is we're facing similar challenge, different challenges, but we're doing it together as the body of Christ. That's, that's rad, Matt. Yeah. Matt, I got one more question for you, unless you guys have any other questions. Mm -mm. Um, Matt, so let me ask you this question. As, as the Lord has taken you on this journey of bold steps of faith and, and, and learning to trust in Him, not in yourself, what are the things you've learned about God through this? Like, what have you, as you reflected on just the boldness of, of God in your life? I mean, what is some, just for you personally, you feel like God has been just teaching you as a leader and just as a follower of Him through these bold steps? No, that's a, that's a great question. 
the man, the wisdom of God and just the mm. uh, the power of His Word. I feel like as I've as I've gone through probably the most difficult year uh, this past year through through personal things with my dad, through the weight of ministry, through man, I've buried a dozen kids this past year. All of those things, these heavy situations, just the the faithfulness of God, the wisdom of God, and knowing that man, the truth of Scripture has speaking into my own heart but then taking the truth of scripture i think sometimes as leaders we feel like we have to have it together we have to have all the answers and when i had to face the situation of of adam tolelo and and a young 13 year old boy uh, who was mm -hmm. killed by a police officer or when man four of my staff who are running the food pantry lost their parents to covid this year and these these crazy situations wow. that i have no idea what to say in those situations the beauty is I don't have to have it all figured out. I can go to the truth of scripture. I can go to the wisdom of believers around me, the body of Christ, and God has given us what we need each step of the way. And so I think just the, man, the faithfulness of God, his provision through highs and lows, God's continued faithfulness and provision, despite my own weakness, despite my own mm -hmm. uh, wanting to throw in the towel plenty of times in this past year, uh, year and a half. Um, the love of God, the love of God being just, man, incredibly deep for my own self, the love that we can give uh, through men and women who are new believers, who um, are sharing that same love, and just how it, it spreads. A, a big theme we talk about is building the beloved community and this idea of beloved community. And if you break down beloved, which God talks about us being his beloved children, it's be loved and it's mm -hmm. this idea of soaking up the love of god that he has for each of us and that we're no matter what we've done where we've been who we are how we act the in, the incredible love of god but then also on the flip how do we then be love uh to others and so i think i've just soaked in that sat in that uh and through some some pretty dark valleys this past year uh, but I think those are the few of the things amongst uh, many that, that God has been speaking to me, uh, teaching uh, me, mm -hmm. and just, man, the fact that I don't have to have it all figured out and that God will give us exactly what we need for the uh, challenges we face. So, Man, Matt, that's, that's yeah. awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to our team, to speak to all of our leaders, and it's just a big blessing to us, man. Thank you so much, Matt. Yeah, we uh, we gotta have you back on. <laughs> we yeah, could yeah, talk all you'll day, definitely I feel be back. like. <laughs> if you don't mind, Matt, yeah, we'd love to have you back on at some point. Yeah, for sure. That sounds great. Yeah, maybe you'll tell everyone about why why you guys play with those softballs that are like the size of basketballs. I still don't understand that. It's just <laughs> it seems like such a I don't know. It doesn't make sense to me, man. But There's yeah. much you have to learn, especially about the game. You guys are you guys have the Padres, which we saw them choke royally. So yeah, uh, the Cubs did great. The Cubs baseball. did great too. So that's good to hear as well. <laughs> I don't want to talk about the Cubs. <laughs> <laughs> it's too soon. Oh man. Okay, Matt. Well, hey man, God bless you. Thank you so much for having us on. And hey, leaders, I hope you are encouraged and challenged and blessed like we were to hear that. And I mean, there's just so much to unpack and all that. But yeah. I just think my big takeaway is just that one step. What is that one step that right. you can take as a leader? Uh, and just to see God work through that, that it just will change, move. change our lives, change our lives. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Until next time. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.